All right, let me go ahead and welcome everyone again. I'm Damon Wilson, Executive Vice President here at the Atlanta Council. It's just a real pleasure uh, to welcome the Vice Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Georgia, uh, Georgi uh, Kiri, uh, Kiri Kastrovili. We're delighted to have you with us here uh, tonight on uh, what I think is your first visit to the United States as Foreign Minister. However, you know the United States uh, quite well. And I welcome all, want to welcome all of our guests who are joining us this evening from our board, from our network, from the administration in particular. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, tonight's conversation is part of the Atlantic Council's longstanding commitment to Georgia. And part of our programming's premise uh, is really how we've been mobilizing a community to support Georgia's aspirations um, towards Europe, towards NATO, its relationship with the United States, how to help build this really unique relationship and alliance between the United States and Georgia itself. Uh, and at the same time, bolstering the reform process in the country that drives so much of this agenda. Um, but we also recognize that there are pretty difficult times right now. Um, if you look north to the challenge that Ukraine is facing, south to the conflict in Syria, to your European partners who are dealing with economic challenges, a migration challenge, and to the United States that continues to grapple with the question of what is its sustainable role in the world and in this region, um, not to mention the challenges that Georgia faces it, to its own sovereignty, uh, as well as, of course, the always heated political scene in Georgia. Um, and so what we have here this evening is part of a community that we've been working to build of, of uh, Americans and others and that believe strongly in Georgia's future and believe strongly in American leadership in this region working with Georgia. So tonight we look forward uh, to your remarks, Mr. Minister, uh, and to our conversation uh, on the relationship with the United States, uh, on Georgia's relationship with the alliance, so with NATO, and the run-up to a summit next year in Poland, to prospects to, to grow and build trade and investment, as well as seize energy opportunities in the region as well. Uh, so with that, let me again welcome you on behalf of the Atlantic Council and invite you to offer a few words on the record before we turn to our dinner. Thank you very much. Um, Damon and dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am really pleased to be here. Um, I am pleased to have a chance to talk to policymakers, decision makers. It is extremely important to exchange the views over the prospects of uh, development of Georgia and the wider region. Um, I will, uh, from your permission, make some remarks and then we can switch to uh, conversation. Uh, Euro-Atlantic integration has been uh, firmly, um, uh, has been and firmly remains Georgia's foreign policy priority. We believe that our national security and um, lasting regional peace can be achieved only through our strategic partnership with the United States and through our integration into NATO. In recent years, both security and democratic values have been endangered in our region. Russian aggression first against Georgia and now against uh, Ukraine uh, left no doubt about Russia's intention of carving out a sphere of influence in the post-Soviet space. Western passivity in the face of uh, Russian aggression not only encourages Moscow, but also discourages the regional countries. It is impossible to appease Russia by striking geopolitical deals with Moscow, because tomorrow these agreements would be quickly forgotten by Kremlin if necessary. Also so-called frozen conflicts provide only temporary peace that will inevitably turn into greater problems later on. These conflicts do not resolve by themselves without the active political and diplomatic engagement from the West. Georgia chose uh, a cautious yet very principled foreign policy and in the past few years made a steady progress towards democratization. Not only did we manage to escape Russia's diktat, but also created a viable state uh, with evolving democratic institutions. Our relationship with Russia remains our greatest foreign and security challenge. The Georgian government continuously demonstrated its goodwill to persuade Russia to fulfill the August 2008 agreement and withdraw from Georgia occupied territories, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. 
we have been conducting principled negotiations with Russians in Geneva, as well as talking to them through Prime Minister's special representative. We also established a visa-free travel regime for Russian citizens unilaterally. Despite our best efforts, Russians grabbed more territories, erected barbed wire fences, and signed the so-called cooperation agreements with de facto authorities. Uh, these agreements establish a definitive policy of creeping annexation of these lands by Russia. Despite these provocative actions, Georgian government remained truthful to strategic patience. However, as history has taught us, it is an illusion to count on Russia's goodwill in resolving conflicts. Our main tools for winning is building democracy and the rule of law. Indeed, Georgia has been and remains a champion of liberty and democracy in the region. Peaceful power transition three years ago gave a fresh start to democratic reforms. Our government established a genuine system of political checks and balances and ensured that the law enforcement, judicial, and penitentiary systems were effective, independent, transparent, and also truly depoliticized. We have achieved a lot, but there is still more to accomplish. One of the most important promises that we made was restoration of justice. This meant not only correction of misdeeds of the previous government or investigation of some of most atrocious of their crimes, but also empowering larger, previously disadvantaged segments of the population. Our emphasis on the protection of private property rights created new opportunities for Georgian and international business community. Media freedom remains one of our greatest achievements. The government does not control any media outlets, including the state-funded Georgian public broadcaster. In the last few days, we have witnessed a legal dispute over the ownership of the Rustavi 2 TV company. There are attempts to cast this dispute as political. I assure you that everything will be done to ensure that there is no interference in the broadcasting policy of any media company. Let me reiterate that even the most biased broadcasting policy can bring much less harm to the country than our partners and friends' questions with respect to media freedom in Georgia. Democratic transformation is a continuous process. Practice shows that this process does not end even after joining NATO or the European Union. Therefore, even in case of questions about the ongoing democratic process in Georgia, this should not become an impediment or a conditionality for Georgia's integration with Euro-Atlantic structures. Our government is committed to free entrepreneurship and free trade. According to the World Bank new report on governance since 2012, Georgia made very impressive progress, jumping dozens of places in the World Bank ranking in terms of regulatory quality, voice, voice and accountability, rule of law, political stability, and absence of violence, and government effectiveness, and control of corruption. These improved practices helped us to retain economic growth and political stability in a very volatile regional environment. When double crisis in Ukraine and the Middle East drained out region of international investments and seriously shook the economic and monetary credibility of regional countries, Georgia still remains resilient to all these crises. Once again, Georgian people's huge and bold investment in democracy paid off and gave our government mandate to continue with political and economic reforms. We are committed to these reforms and we need strong support from the West, first of all, from the United States, to keep our good work going. Above all, Georgia needs reassurance. Despite all the hardship, disappointment, fatalities of our soldiers in military missions in Iraq and Afghanistan, and previous failed expectations of membership action plan for NATO, our public remained committed to the Euro-Atlantic course. Our people registered very high preference for Georgia's membership of both NATO and the EU. According to 
various authoritative surveys. Yet this tendency cannot be taken for granted, as in the absence of solid commitments to Georgia from the West, our electorate may begin to question the benefits of Georgia's Euro-Atlantic choice. Let me say that the Western approach to regional conflicts has been sporadic and incremental. As soon as any regional conflict lost its intensity, it would be relegated to the back burner. So, for instance, occupation of Georgia's lands has been hardly revoked as the crisis in Ukraine evolved. And Ukraine may not be the last conflict in the region, and it is not the last conflict in the region. Therefore, what we need is not an incremental approach to each crisis, but a comprehensive strategy to contain and roll back extremism, aggression, and authoritarianism. It is impossible to maintain a status quo, let alone democratic transformation, only relying on resolve and perseverance of individual countries such as Georgia. Together with our Western allies, first of all, the United States, we should work to ensure that Georgia gets its due at NATO Warsaw Summit next year. We have demonstrated both political and technical readiness for advancing to the next stage of integration with NATO. Now the ball is in the West Court, and we are ready to discuss creative approaches to advancing Georgia along the path to NATO. We believe the United States is our key ally in this endeavor. Another big issue for Georgia is exploring the opportunity of free trade with the United States. President Obama declared in 2012 that it was time to start the high-level trade dialogue on trade and investment with Georgia. We believe we should start talking about a free trade agreement with the United States. Such an agreement would be mutually beneficial. Needless to say, it would help Georgia economically, but also strengthen the rule of law in our country. An American-Georgian free trade agreement would also demonstrate the regional countries that democratic, to regional countries that democratic reforms pay off, and such reforms may have very tangible economic benefits. Finally, I would like to underline the importance of the political support from the United States for Georgia since the first days of our independence. America was our greatest partner and ally. You helped us to survive harsh times, strengthen our statehood, and assisted us in developing our democratic institutions. Now I believe it's time to take our partnership to the new level and make Georgian-American relations the backbone of regional stability and democratization. Thank you very much. Minister Kaviri Kashvili, thank you very much for your remarks. Thank you. Uh, that's incredible grist for us to have a good conversation with tonight. So, uh, uh, and Mr. Ambassador, thank you for helping to make this possible.